Welcome to episode 52 of the Instant Impact Podcast. Oh my gosh, it's been a year. It's so exciting. It is so hard to believe. I mentioned this on episode 50, just how much, you know, having this platform and being able to share these ideas and meet the incredible guests on this show and introduce them to you has been really, really just such a blessing over this past year. And, you know, I thought for today's episode, um, I would do something a little bit different and fun to commemorate the one year anniversary. So I'm going to share some personal stuff that's been going on in my life and then also share with you what it's taught me and how I've learned. So um, if you didn't guess it from the title, (laughs) uh, Jason and I are super excited to um, to be able to share that we are pregnant with our first and expecting the summer. And um, yeah, I shared it on social media a couple weeks ago. So you may have already seen that. And I tell you what, um, it has been such a journey. And before I go into any of this, I also just want to share that because I have been on that pregnancy journey, I know there were times for me when um, I couldn't listen to other people talk about it. And so if that is you, if this is something that you're actively going through right now, you do not need to listen to this episode. You can shut it off. Um, Come back to it down the road if you want. But I just want to really let you know wherever you are on your journey um, with pregnancy, with fertility, with growing your family. Um, I, I get all of the emotions that go along with it and I haven't had all of what everyone experiences, but I've had quite a bit of it. And so um, I just want to really let you know that my heart is 100% with you. And this is not going to turn into a pregnancy podcast. Okay. I can promise that, but (laughs) um, it is, it's something that has taught me so much. And I think there've been some really valuable lessons, you know, for me in my life. And I think that will be helpful for you as well. So um, if you would like, stay tuned to listen into a little bit of my journey and then the lessons as well. So um, with that, I will, I'll take you back. So my husband, Jason, and I got married almost three years ago now, and we really quickly um, decided to start trying to get pregnant. And I kind of thought it was going to happen like that. Like you just snap your fingers and it happens. That's what happened for my parents. That's what happened for his parents. And it didn't. And, um, you know, after about two years of trying unsuccessfully uh, last year, so about a year ago now, we, um, we found out that we were pregnant and it was the biggest blessing of my life. And I was so excited. And the thing that I didn't expect that, you know, you may be able to relate to is how much your identity transforms as soon as you find out you're going to have a parent. And I went from being uh, have a parent, <laughs> okay, pregnancy brain, have a baby. Um, I went from being just 100% focused on my work, on my business, on my own life, you know, on my stuff with, with Jason and family and friends to suddenly it was like my whole identity got wrapped up in becoming a mother to this child. And there were a lot of things that transformed really fast in my life. You know, I looked around at where we were living at the time and we, um, we had moved about a year before from North Carolina to Georgia and we'd like sold almost everything when we moved from North Carolina and we're starting over fresh in Georgia. So we were renting at the time and didn't have, you know, a, a big place where we could raise kids. Um, so I was like, we need a bigger place immediately. And literally within, I think it was three weeks of making the decision that we needed a place, we had closed on a house. Um, and it was crazy how fast it happened. And there was stuff in there too, where it's like, it shouldn't have happened as easily as it did. Um, with me being an entrepreneur and having, you know, started my new business, we didn't even have a full year of income records for me. And so if any of you who are listening have been through this, um, it can be quite a, a process to get approved for a loan as an entrepreneur, especially if you don't yet have a full year of income records in a certain business. And somehow, miraculously, it went through and it happened at the 11th hour. And we moved into the type of house that I had been journaling about every morning. I was, I would journal, you know, I see myself in a home with five bedrooms and a fenced in backyard that's in walking distance to a, a local community and blah, blah, blah. And I'd written it all out. And it was exactly, we manifested the exact house that I had been writing about. And it happened so quickly and so easily. And then, you know, I I took a look at my business model at the time as well. And I had just, um, you know, within about a year, I had just launched 
a new business and it was doing really well, but all of my money was coming from direct work with clients. And so I'm looking at, you know, eight, seven, eight months out, I'm going to want to take time off to be with this child. And I don't have a business model right now that's going to let me do that. And so I started interviewing coaches and and looking for the right coach to help me. And I ended up hiring a coach who I'd followed online for years and I had loved her stuff and, and kind of, you know, eaten it up and um, ended up hiring a coach to help me build out my business model and processes so that I could scale and then have some time off from, um, you know, from work. And so we made some very quick changes. That was a significant investment, but we just did all these things like boom, boom, boom. And then seven weeks in, we miscarried. And it was probably one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. And so if you are going through that, have been through that, um, my heart is absolutely with you. I didn't realize how common it was until I shared about it publicly and people started coming out and sharing about it. And I think it's statistically like one in four, one in five pregnancies ends in miscarriage, which I just didn't know because that hasn't been, we don't have a family history of that. And that was a really, really, really hard transition for me because so many things. And part of it was I didn't feel like I knew who I was anymore without seeing myself as a mom. I had gotten so much of my identity so quickly wrapped up in the concept of being a mom and having this baby. And you know, we had bought the house and I had invested in the coaching program and made all these moves to... Um, to be prepared to be the best parents that we could be. And suddenly it felt like that was all gone. And I went through a couple of weeks of like real, I would say real depression about it. And it took a while. It, it took a while for me to start feeling like myself again. Um, one of the things that it taught us though, was just how badly we wanted to be parents. And so a little bit later in the year, we started the adoption process because we just thought, you know, I'm, I'm not getting younger. He's not getting younger. According to um, a lot of science, I am of, I'm like a geriatric pregnancy, which is so offensive, <laughs> but it is what it is. And, um, and so we thought, you know what, we absolutely want to have kids for us. IVF at the time just didn't make sense, but I absolutely know a lot of people who are doing that and where it does make sense. So I really think you have to pick your own journey, but we personally didn't want to go down that road. And so we started the adoption process. And for any of you who have adopted, that's a whole nother process that we, <laughs> we learned a lot about. And um, just the process of even getting approved for the home study and submitting all of your paperwork. It's kind of like, you know, applying for a mortgage times a hundred with what they have to look at and, and, um, and, and worth every bit of it. Right. And you want them to be thorough in their search and thorough in their, um, just their, their kind of screening of who these parents, potential parents are going to be. But we spent months and months and months working with, um, a, a woman who's going to help us with our home study. So you've got to get a home study done first to basically get you approved and then just connecting with different potential, um, you know, agencies and, and places where we might be able to connect with a child. And it was this past Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, where we were just wrapping up a lot of the, the home study process. And, um, and so we were about to start, you know, getting paired up with agencies and, and start that journey of getting paired up with a child, hopefully. I just had a feeling that just had a feeling. And I went after my peer bar class in the morning and I got pregnancy test and um, I got back home and I go to, I go do my workout super early. So like five 30 in the morning. And so when I got back, Jason and the dogs were still asleep in the next room and I took the test and it was positive. I'm going to cry now talking about this. <laughs> I haven't shared this part of the story a lot publicly. And I literally fell on the ground crying and I was, it was just like the best, it was the best blessing of my life. Um, and so I got to share it with Jason and then with uh, my mom, like on Thanksgiving, which is really cool. And um, then we went into the process of kind of waiting because for anyone who has miscarried and then been pregnant afterwards, there's just, there's, I don't feel like you can fully relax 
during it. Um, that has been a lot of my journey is learning how to relax about it. Um, but we really went through the process of just kind of waiting out the first trimester and, um, and, and trying to just be present for it and grateful and as relaxed as possible. And um, we are now as at the time of the recording of this, which is a couple of weeks before I'll air it. Um, we're at 17 weeks and some change and um, feeling really good and heard the heartbeat this morning and just super grateful for that. So we're due this summer. Oh, but it's taught me so much. This past year has taught me so much. And it's a lot of lessons that I apply um, not just to my life, but to my business as well. And, and I wanted to share with you these three lessons that I've really learned that I think will hopefully be really helpful for you. And so the first thing I've learned is the power and the importance of trusting your body and your instincts. And I tell you what, um, when I was pregnant last year for the first time, I really got that I didn't trust my body. And I was in so much anxiety the whole time about losing the baby. And I couldn't, I couldn't place where it was coming from because I'd never been pregnant and I didn't know what it was about. But every day I would struggle with so much anxiety about, am I going to do something wrong? Am I going to mess this up? Am I going to, am I going to miscarry? Am I going to lose the baby? And sure, you know, sure enough, it happened. And the lesson I got there was, wow, I don't trust my body. And if you don't trust your body or your instincts, it's going to be really hard for you to navigate through life, through business, um, because there's so many intuitive signals that you can learn. And even just the process of having a child, like it's taught me, you know, this time as we've kind of gone through the process and I've relaxed into it more and kind of surrendered control, my body's running the show. I'm kind of just here. <laughs> and your body is uniquely programmed with so much knowledge of what to do, how to do it, what the perfect timing is for things. And it really started me down this, this journey of studying, you know, biomimicry and how nature to nature will model for you exactly um, how to run your business, exactly how to run your life, that there are seasons for things, that there are times um, to be full out and vibrant, kind of like the summer. And then there are times to come back and rest and plan and rejuvenate and, and get recentered, kind of like the earth does in the winter. And so there's so much that we can just look to nature to learn. And all of that is encoded in your body as well. And so one of the biggest, you know, blessings and gifts of this experience has been learning how to trust my own instincts and listen to my body and really get reconnected again with, um, with the natural wisdom that's already in my body. And a couple ways you can do that if you're looking to deepen that relationship. I think first, it really comes down to your morning routine and I don't care how many times you hear this. Sometimes I think you can hear something from a lot of different people, but it doesn't click. And then for whatever reason, you hear it from someone else and it just clicks. I hope if it hasn't clicked yet, that maybe this is that time for you. You know, there are very few days these days where I don't get up and first read, meditate, pray, journal. And there is so much wisdom that comes from that experience, whether it's you know, journaling, what am I afraid of right now? If there's something that's really like got me kind of in its hooks and, and just being able to get it out on a paper and see that just because you're thinking it doesn't make it true, you know, or asking a question, you know, asking a question about what should I do with my business or with this aspect of a relationship and just being available for the answer to come, whether in meditation in you know, in your journaling, in the next thing you read in a book or on social media, I think you know, spirit God talks to us in a lot of different ways and meets you where you are, but you've got to create the space and the time for that to happen, to hear those messages. So spending the time in the mornings has really, really, it's always been a part of my routine. I shouldn't say always, but probably the past, gosh, I don't know, seven, eight years. Um, but it has become a much deeper, intimate connection time with God in the mornings for me. And so that's been really, really profound. And then, you know, two other, two books that have really helped me that I think are great resources. The first is called The Intuitive Way 
by Penny Pierce. And it's almost like a master workbook on accessing and deepening your intuition. It's so powerful. It's so cool. You'll, my mind has been blown reading it. And so you'll learn a lot about exercises you can do and ways you can tap into deeper you know, intuition and trust within your body. And then the second is Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein. And this book, I, I read three times in a row because there were so many lessons for me that I felt like I just hadn't thought about before. And, and she talks about the importance of relaxing and having fun and allowing yourself to kind of flow with what's going on. And I think, you know, before I went through this whole experience, I was gripping so tight to having to be in control of everything and to the outcome of everything. And that was causing migraines. It was causing stress. Um, it was, yeah, all the not fun stuff and learning to relax. And that, um, at the end of the day, yes, we need to take big action. Yes. We need to go for our goals. Yes. We need to, we, we need to, you know, have the action part of manifestation down, but there's also a level of just being and allowing yourself to receive and to, um, to have fun along the way that I hadn't really tapped into before. So that was really the first lesson for me was to learn how to trust my body and my instincts. Quick water break and I will be back with the next one. <laughs> so the next one here is learning the power of efficiency and priorities. So uh, you know, every pregnancy is different. And for me personally, uh, so far, second trimester has been great. It's been easy. First trimester was a hot mess. Um, first trimester, and part of why it's hard too, and if you've been through this, like you know it, you're not really necessarily telling a lot of people yet that you're pregnant, but you feel like crap. You are tired all the time. You're sick. Um, for me personally, I was eating everything in sight. I did not have the issue of not being able to eat. In fact, I would eat like a pizza for a snack and then I would go lay down and I would sleep. And I, I had like um, probably one to two hours a day when I felt like I could be productive. And this was so hard for me because I am a doer. I'm a taskmaster. I'm a get her done type of thing. Like I got, I, I love checking the boxes. I love getting things done. And to go from having a full day to a couple of hours a day where you can get stuff done and to not necessarily be talking with people yet about why you are sucking wind so much at what you're doing. It was just tough. But what it really taught me was about how to get super efficient and how to get really, really clear on what actually matters. And so I'll share with you just a couple of tips that have helped me with that, that I've really lasered in on in the past couple of months. You know, the first thing is delegation. And regardless of where you are in your business, I really encourage you start keeping a list called who else could do this. And every time you find yourself doing something that is not something you would pay someone else your hourly rate to do, you need to put it on that list. It doesn't matter if you have someone identified yet or not to fill in that role, but you just start keeping this list because for me, one of the best blessings of kind of going into this experience the second time has been the first time I was pregnant, I didn't really have a team. You know, I was rebuilding my business. I had gone from having a team helping me with stuff to really doing it all on my own, most of it on my own. And then the, what it forced me to do was look at, I need to have a team. I need systems. I need people in place. So I had started building up a team and I've got a team of about six or seven now who I work with on different elements of the business. And so it was so nice to be able to delegate, um, and get them doing stuff and helping me along. And it doesn't mean everything went perfectly. I, I would say, honestly, I don't think we performed at the same level we normally do during that first trimester. However, um, however, it was a heck of a lot better than it would have been had I tried to do it all on my own. And my team was incredible in that process and really like kept me afloat um, and kept us afloat and kept our clients <laughs> happy during that time. So delegate. And I, I think it also speaks to, you know, right now, maybe you don't have plans to grow your family or to no one plans to get sick or you know stuff like that. But we want to always be thinking about if I couldn't do this task, who else could do it? That is really building out a true business, right? Leadership is not about getting things done. It's about getting things done through other people. And so keeping that list. And then for me, every month I go in and I take a look at the list and I'll just look to see what could be delegated this month. 
And my intention and my goal is that every month I'm delegating at least one thing off of my plate to go to somebody else on my team. Or maybe I identify I need a new team member and I start sourcing and recruiting and bringing in that person. So delegate, delegate, delegate is key. And then the second is to know what your actual priorities are. Um, I tend to be very much an overachiever where I want to do everything and do it all at once. And I think I can get it all done in a short amount of time. And in a lot of ways, that's good because it keeps me going after big goals. And then in other ways, it can cause a lot of stress and unnecessary stress and worry about things not happening the way you wanted them to and yada, yada. So for me, one of the things that forced me to do was get really clear on what are our actual short list of priorities as a company that we can be driving towards and working towards. And in terms of you know, mapping those out, for me, I like working in 90-day chunks. And there's, there's so many good resources on this. I mean, there's programs, and I haven't personally taken these, but I know there's great, there's a book called The 12-Week Year. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of resources that you can find on this. But the reason why is, the t I'm a big fan of having a one-year goal and, and knowing what that is. And I have, you know, kind of a three-year and a 10-year vision for my business as well. But you, when you get so far out, it's really hard to attach the daily actions that you take to accomplishing a goal. And so for me personally, I work in 90 day chunks, so quarterly chunks, and I always have a top anywhere from one to three priorities for those next 90 days that our team's goal is, is to accomplish. And that is our mission to accomplish that goal. And um, knowing what the priorities are helps you to easily say no to things that are not your priorities. And it just helps you easily focus in on, does this align with one of the big three priorities? If so, yes, I'm willing to give it time. And my assistant knows to make time for it on my calendar. And if it doesn't, then we, we simply let somebody know that we appreciate the opportunity. And right now it doesn't align with our priorities, but we might be interested in the future. So it's going to help you really get clear on what is actually a yes for you and what is a no for you? Um, something else that I've, I've started doing, I'd say over the past six months or so, that's been really helpful is keeping a flip chart in a corner of my office, like one of those big sticky post-it easels that you can get, post-its that can go on an easel. Um, you can just get it off of Amazon or an office supply store. But I keep my priorities for the week listed on there in order of importance. So it's like, this gets done first, this gets done second, this gets done third. And I don't move on to the next one until the first one is done. And it helps like even this week, for example, today, I had some work to get done for our affiliate program. So I focused on that this morning, that got done, checked it off. My next work was to get two podcast episodes created and recorded. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then those will check off and I'll move on to the next thing. But it's really, but I'm able to get clear on those because I know what my priorities are. And I know what's actually important and what deserves my attention versus what doesn't. Each of those things also gets calendared. So um, I'm not a fan of just keeping a long running to-do list because I always feel so overwhelmed anytime I'm just working off of a to-do list and I don't have it in my schedule. So everything needs to have time carved out on the calendar when it's going to get done and accomplished. And then the final component I would say of knowing your priorities is, um, at least it's been helpful for me, is using a really good project management software. So about a year ago now, maybe eight months ago, we started using monday.com and I've really liked it. This is not sponsored by Monday or anything like that, but um, I think having some sort of a project management software to kind of run the different pieces of your life, you know, because before that I was just using these long running to-do lists of everything that needed to happen and I couldn't see how it all fit together and I couldn't see who could do what on my team and it, it felt like I had to get it all done at once. So I love using some sort of a software, a, a project management software that allows you to see bird's eye view each area of your business, each area of your life, who's doing what, and then see where you are at in each step of the process. So I actually use this now for not only my business, but also my personal life. And, you know, Jason may love it or hate it. I don't know. I think he's, he's going along with it and he's, um, he's on board, but we use it to plan out like, our, our own family goals and things we need to get done, you know, baby prep, um, adoption prep. Gosh, I never even mentioned this. I should go back and say with the adoption, we are still going to adopt, just not 
right now. Um, I, I think I know my limits and I feel like that would be probably more than I can handle right now, but we still have a task list and a, like a project for the adoption of what needs to get done and what's happening next. So that having some sort of project management software that you can dump your to-dos in and then every week go in and see what from this list needs to go on my calendar for this week so that I can be making forward progress. Um, plus, it's just so satisfying to check off the boxes as stuff gets done. And there, I love it. So those have been tips that have really helped me when it comes to efficiency and priorities. And you know, I'm, I'm back at a pretty optimal energy level now, so we're really cranking and getting stuff done. But I also am working on a deadline where in you know, five months, I want to be able to take time off. So we're really using all of these methods to, um, to help us get ramped up, get work, you know, get ahead of time on schedule for things, get a lot done in a short amount of time. And they're really, really working well for us. And then the third thing that I have learned and that I would really encourage you to do is to enjoy the process. And, you know, like I mentioned this, this past year, there were some really low points. It was some of the, like the hardest things I've been through in my life. And it's also really shaped me into a different person. And so one of the things that I have learned to adopt a mindset I've learned to adopt is that everything is happening for you. Everything, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And so even when those really hard things happen in life, if we can know that ultimately the universe is working for your greater good, and it may be that you don't get an outcome you thought you were going to get with a situation, you may have gotten really attached to that outcome. However, that situation was designed to mold you and shape you into the man or woman who then is able to go on and accomplish certain results in their life or have something even better come along. Um, and trust me, it's, it's hard to say that in the context of losing a child. Like that's very, that's a big leap for me to say. So I'm not even one, it's it, again, it's like, this applies to so many things. Um, whether I think our own situation or stuff like a business deal following, falling through, or, um, you know, you have a goal you set for your business that doesn't happen. Like it, but it really does apply to everything. And this past year, even though, I don't fully understand all the why of why things happened the way they did. I can look back and I can see how much we grew in the process. I, you know, I can see that we now live in a home where we could easily grow into a family. I can see that I now have a business that has multiple revenue streams where it's going to be a lot easier for me to take time off this summer with the baby. I have a team that's now supporting me that I didn't have before. Um, my husband and I are closer because of all the late night, you know, crying and conversations and just deep heartfelt, um, you know, heartfelt conversations that we've had. And so what it's taught me is that and this has been a hard lesson for me that I'm not in control and that the more I can, you know, it's like you set an intention, go after what you want with everything, you know, how to go after it and release the outcome, knowing that it will all, whatever happens for you, or happens to you is always happening for you. And when I'm setting my intentions and writing down my goals, it's always, you know, all this or something even better and being open to whatever that better is. And so, um, you know, for any of you who have lost a pregnancy, lost a child, it's like, it doesn't take away that pain. It doesn't make it necessarily feel better in the moment, but I think one day we will all get answers. And in the meantime, which we just really have to trust the process and learn to enjoy the journey as much as you can. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. You know, you set a goal, you go after it, you check it off the list. You maybe celebrate a couple minutes like this weekend, two days ago, I crossed three major goals off of my vision board. They were things I didn't think would happen anytime soon. I did it and we celebrated and it was so great. And then I was like, oh, what's next? What am I going to add on next? So I think it's just the way a lot of us are wired. You know, you go after a goal, you achieve it, but we can't think that our happiness is going to come from the achievement of the goal. It's going to come from the growth that happens along the way on your journey. So really just learn to enjoy the process and be grateful for who you are becoming in the moment because it's a, who you are becoming 
especially through the hard stuff, um, is a man or a woman who is going to be able to go out and take on much bigger goals, tackle much bigger things, um, live an incredible life, make a much bigger impact in the world. And, um, and if you're here, then I really sense that that's on your heart to do. So um, those are my three things that my pregnancy journey has taught me about success in business and life. So I'll just do a quick recap. Number one, trust your body and your instincts. Number two, um, get really great at being efficient and prioritizing. And number three, enjoy the process. So I really hope this helped you. And um, I also want to you know, thank everyone who's kind of been with us on this journey for our, our you know, closer friends and family over the past year who have supported us along the way. There've been so many incredible people who have just helped us know we weren't alone through it. And um, so I'm so grateful for that. And if I can pay it forward in any way, help support you, regardless of the journey that you're on, please reach out and, and let me know because none of life is about going through it alone. So um, would love to help support you in your journey and this process as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. Definitely, you know, if you haven't yet subscribed to the show, make sure you subscribe. I would love a rate and review if you're enjoying it as well. That helps me get the word out to more people and just share this message with someone you think could benefit from it. Um, I really think there's so many people going through pregnancy journeys right now. And um, we sometimes we only see the highlight reel. And I hope today some of what I shared shared like the real journey that we've been through. And um, I hope it helps inspire, encourage you and someone else that you know. So until next time, my friend, lots of love. Thank you so much for joining in today. And I will be back very soon with our next episode. Bye for now.